Hey everyone, this is Ben from ZR Gaming Room. I'm talking about Cable X Force Team Leader and my team build for it. So, the first thing I noticed about this card was the top ability Energize. Spin all of your active character dice up one level. Kind of working out what went well with that and what characters I wanted at the top level. The obvious answer to me was Uncommon Jean Grey from X Men First Class, Professor's Protege. So, when Jean Grey is active, when an opposing character die is fielded, deal damage equal to her, her level. So, this works well if you can get her to level three because you're doing three damage every time your opponent fields a character. As Jean Grey is kind of an expensive dude, you can pair her with Hope Summers, uh, Pluripotent Exafraxia. When she's fielded, you can copy Jean Grey, and then you suddenly have a two, three cost on level three that's dealing three damage to your opponent each time. The second thing about Cable is his secondary ability, obviously. If you have an active character with Energize, Cable is free to field. I was looking through cheap Energize characters, and I came across Psylocke Reforming X-Force. So when she energizes, she can field a psychic die from your use pile. So using the Psylocke, uh, I'm going to be clearing out my use pile of psychics, putting them in my field zone. Kind of an obvious pairing with that is the super rare Jubilee Maw Rat. So when Jubilee is active, when you field a psychic die, you can deal one damage to target opponent or character die. This again works super well with the Hope Summers, so you can get them both out, get some Psylocks going, and now you're doing two damage per psychic you field, which is really strong. If I'm having all these psychics and level three characters out using Cable and Psylocke, I thought the obvious answer for some ramp is Power Almighty. So this is from the Justice set, and I think it's the only non-X-Men thing in my whole build. Uh, but you get to spin each of your character dice up already. If they can't be spun up, you get to prep a die from your bag. So you can prep a whole ton of dice using this Cable, Psylocke, Power Almighty combo. It's kind of an expensive combo to get started, uh, what with a couple of four costs in your team, the Cable and the Power Almighty to buy off the bat. So I put in the Professor X, to me, my X-Men, which is the one that has the old Heimdall global. You can pay him our sponsor during your turn, and you may prep up two sidekicks. This just lets you kind of set your bag up um, a little bit better to get some of the Power Almighty's flowing and some of the psychic in the field. Uh, and it works really well. So at this point of the team build, I was kind of all in with X-Men stuff. Um, I kind of figured what other X-Men work well when they're on top level as opposed to bottom level. And a card I've always kind of really liked, but had problems with, was uh, Havoc Cosmic Absorption. Now, this is a common from X-Men First Class. The thing about it, if he takes damage, he deals an equal amount of damage back to another target character. So it's really strong, except on level 1, it's only a 1-4 attack. So if you're attacking with it, and you want to get it blocked, they're probably just going to let it through to take 1 damage. But if it's on level 3, Cable can help him with, makes him a 5 attack. Now if you're attacking with him, they're much more likely to block, and you're much likely to take out a couple more things with him. So I thought he was really strong. And then the last card, classic X-Men character, Bishop Butterfly Effect. It's the rare. When Bishop is active, prevent all non-combat damage dealt to you. I figured with the combo of Jean Grey, keeping their side of the field quite thin, the only way they're really going to win is by stuff like Norman Osborn or fielded effects that do damage. Uh, I thought Bishop was a good shout for that. Again, this works really well with Hope Summers because you can copy Hope with Bishop. And then lastly, I had one more basic action slot left. And I figured the obvious thing with all these X-Men, and a lot of them with beefy stats already, I figured teamwork would be quite good. So this is teamwork. Your active character dice get plus one attack and plus one defense for each of your other different active characters that share an affiliation with it. So with all these X-Men, use a Jean Grey, make their field really thin, and then you can just swing through using this to give all your characters really beefy stats, use that cable, get it in the field for free, get it up to level five, uh, level three, or five, five, and you just got some beefy. Hi everyone, this is Chris from CR Game Room bringing you my brew for Cable Body Slide. I was really happy to get Cable because I was new, too new to appreciate Infiltrate at the time and wanted to familiarize myself with the mechanic more because I think it is a fun concept to play around with. All right, Cable had to be the main win condition. So adding other infiltrate ca characters should be good along with a trick or two. To start out with, I wanted to have a good ramp tool and one I played a lot. So I decided on Mimic Borrowed Talent because he is an easy early purchase and a consistent ramp that later on can turn into a threat if played right. With Mimic copying sidekicks, the best way to field sidekicks with consistency is with Professor X Nomer Magnus and Billy Club Tool of Justice. These two cards with Mimic can make it to where you can play all your dice every turn if done correctly, and if an interruption is done, you can still do a decent amount of ramp or bag thinning. The thing this team is kind of weak against is Green Devil Mask, Lesser Trap, and Blanking, of course. So 
but mostly the uh, Green Devil Mask, because I think a wall of characters is needed. Blob Appetite for Destruction is a flexible blanker and Green Devil Mask tool. And also for my last non-infiltrate spot, the team needs some early bag fixing, and the card that fills uh, that need nicely is Create Food and Water. This basic action helps filter what you pull out, but also helps you field a sidekick, which also is a good ramping tool later on and helps finish. Now for the cards that make it an infiltrate team. First off, to fill a low drop and help with mask for Mimic, I put Danny Moonstar Cheyenne. She is a two cost infiltrator with low fielding cost and the art is just cool to me. Next, I added uh, Black Widow Spider's Bite to increase infiltrate damage. A few turns with her can mean game over for your opponent. The last optional character I've put on the team should be no surprise. It's Angela Hunter of Demons. She turns Infiltrate into something that is hard to deal with because the team cannot be blocked, making it easier to trigger Infiltrate. If you would have lethal with combat damage, you can use Odin's Fury Global to remove Angela after blockers are declared. Yeah, your team is swinging through for unblockable damage. It's a sweet pivot piece. If the opponent has a global to bring things back like Cake Bishop or Static Field, then it could be stifled. But that is when you rely on increasing your infiltrate damage. Hello everyone, Rob here in the new and improved Brewer's Corner. We let our Patreon members decide which character card to build around and our first entry was Cable from the recent X-Force team pack. I chose Cable Psionic Blast, the 5 cost bolt character, as my version and went to town on working on a way to make him a real beat stick. Disclaimer, this is by no means a competitive team, but it does seem like a lot of fun. Before I talk about how this build makes him a monster, I wanted to cover some of the support pieces on the team. First off, let's start with some ramp. I went with the classic trio of Mimic Borrowed Talent to copy sidekicks and prep dice whenever a sidekick is fielded. Professor X No More Magus for the global ability to field me some of those sidekicks. Also, since I got my hands on the animated series version, I thought it would be a nice touch. Uh, and Billy Club, Tool of Justice for some of that sweet, sweet spin down action to make some masks. Uh, all the ramp will make it easy to purchase cable faster if we have to do a hard buy, but why do that when we can get them for cheap? I have Cree Captain Warmonger on the team as a cheap buy with nice stats, but more specifically the global ability essentially makes cable a 3 cost character. I mean, why pay full price when you have a nice little coupon? Also, Creek Captain can be used as global fodder for the next piece on the team. Wrecker, Demolition Man, the four cost fist. Not only does he help thin the field for my cable by forcing something to block him, but his global ability makes another one of my opponent's dice block while giving one of my dice a nice one attack buff. Next up on the team is Jubilee, Jubilation Lee, the three cost bolt. She is here to add some extra pink damage when attacking with Cable since she does 1 damage to your opponent for each other attacking Bolt character die, which Cable is. Let's talk about Cable himself. He does damage equal to his level to each character die blocking him. We need to be able to push damage over the weakened blocking die. In comes Haymaker. This will give Cable plus 3 attack and overcrush. Not only that, but we can use the global to pump him up. For this team to do max damage, we need our opponent's field to run thin so we can push as much damage through as possible. Hello, trusty friend, Green Devil Mask Lesser Trap. This, along with Wrecker, should help free up some of those pesky blockers. Speaking of pumping and removal, our last card on the team is Confront the Mighty. We can utilize this basic action to raise Cable's attack and instantly remove a blocker. Something like, I don't know, a rare blob maybe? In that scenario, Cable can get up to an 8-5. I wouldn't want to take on that psionic blast. Well everybody, that's my Cable team. Again, this isn't going to win you any WKOs, but I hope you find it fun and interesting. Let us know what you would have done differently with this team or any of the teams mentioned in this video in the comments below. If you're interested in submitting a card for Brewer's Corner, you can join our Patreon to expedite any card suggestions you have for us. And as always, thanks for hanging out. Bye. That's going to wrap things up for us here in the CR Game Room. Check out our website, crgr.rocks, for all our latest info. There you'll find a link to help support us via Patreon. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Join our conversations on Discord. Be sure to like and subscribe. And as always, 
Thanks for hanging out.